Oh, shit, sure, we're live. It's good with you people, man. It's, it's your boy, good. Eric, a.k.a. Young Guy, coming to you in the Orange Dungeon, giving it to you real raw rugged, man. It's <laughs> 11 o'clock at night. I don't know why I'm doing this. I am tired, but I'm doing it for the people, man. I'm doing it for the culture, as they say. And um, I have my man, Etsy, here, man. Yo, know, like some pounds, bitch. You know, uh, what up, fam? Yo, I'm a big fan of YNS over here, yo. Man's yeah. killing it in the pink dungeon and shit. <laughs> I'm a big fan of you, man. We also have Nate in the cut, probably listening. I'm pretty sure he's doing the same thing. But it's all good. We're still here. And uh, we linked up today, you know, to cook up a classic for the people, man. You got anything to say? Classic for the KDT people, you feel me? Shout, shout out all the start? comedy fans. You got anything to say before we start, man? You got anything, any shout-outs you want to say before we start, man? Anything? Yo, man, holding it down is that boy, Viet Boy, you feel me? Um, fuck, who else? I, I, just all the motherfuckers that be following me and shit. Yo, mad love out here. Hey, man, we're doing it for all of y'all, man. And we come here today to talk about ghostwriting and hip-hop, right? Oh, hell yeah, yo. I'm going to let my man Ezzy start it off since he came up with the topic, man. Yo, fam, um... I feel like with all the allegations against Drake and, like, the topic just being so hot right now, it just fits, yo. I mean, my perspective on it, personally, is that I feel like, as a lyricist, rappers should come with their own shit. Like, my problem is, like, is it really... But, like, the thing is, when someone gets into a studio, you're usually with your homies. You're usually with people that are inspiring you that probably might be like, hey, fam, switch up that line. Hey, don't see this. Say it like this. So is that is that is that is that what's happening? We don't really know. Like, no one knows what's actually happening in these sessions with Drake. Aside from what's actually being credited is that Quentin Miller made a – reference track, and then Drake flew, flowed over it. But I, for me, I've always felt that Drake, he, I mean, he said in interviews that he needs a spark of inspiration to to go off of him. So I feel like Drake could have wrote the lyrics and Quinn Miller could have easily just flowed it off and then Drake d takes that Atlanta flow and does his little absorption to it and, you know, makes it super dope, which is like I don't have an issue with that because f is it really ghostwriting sometimes or is it ghost flowing? You know what I mean? Like, what what's really happening here? Because the lyrics on 10 bands, anybody can make that shit up. 10 band, 50 band, 100 band. They're like, what the fuck? Like, that's easy. That's like ABC shit. Anybody can do that. You feel me? Like, is someone really sitting there writing lyrical miracle shit and Drake spinning it? No. It's like it's like trap lyrics where it's like really, like, not, I don't want to say dumbed down, but it's very simple. You know what I mean? Like, no one's sitting there like, you know, Lupe fiascoing the shit. You feel me? So, I feel like... I feel like, I, I, I honestly, I said this like four times, but I honestly feel like that Drake is ghost flowing, not so much ghost, I mean ghost riders. That's just my opinion on it. Can we can get, get, can we get, can we get, can get a get ghost flowing real quick? Mm, fuck, I see, uh, I don't want to say ghost flowing either because I feel like he's taking, he's, he's taking it and he's doing a little twist on it, but if we're going to def define ghost flowing, someone that's, like someone that is telling you how to flow on a track, someone that's telling you how to pronunciate here and how to, to what the like, you know what I mean? Like, have you seen that Biggie Little Kim thing where Biggie was like, Biggie did the track and then Little Kim did it, uh, like the reference track for it? I never like, rappers have always had reference tracks. Like Dr. Dre, like when Dr. Dre would flow because he wasn't really like the technically the best rapper, so they'd have somebody else flow it for him and write the lyrics, and then Dre would you know do it. Yeah. I know they did that for Easy because like he couldn't really rap, so they like really really help him out or whatever. But yeah. uh, Ghost, just talking about specifically, well, I was talking about generally Ghost writing before we get to Drake. Talking about Ghost writing in rap because I mean people write for people in other genres, and I've stated that I feel like it's okay for I don't know other writers in other genres because that's always been going on in the, like, birth of music. It's always been writers in music or whatever. So I always felt like I was okay. Because usually there was singing, like, the, like, the first, like, first musical, like, you know, vocal, uh, vocal uh, like, a vocal uh, projections were, like, in singing, not rapping. And people always had writing then. But not everybody could sing. So I feel like those people that could really write, what are they going to do just, like, not sing them? So they have to give them to the singers to actually sing. Um, anybody could just learn how to mumble over and rap over a beat, but not everybody could sing. So I felt like that was okay. 
but rap started off of like who has the best you know bars or whatever not who has the best flow or not who has the best I don't know who who could say it the best, but they didn't write it. Like if you didn't write your bars like a beginning of rap, you know you get crucified basically. So I feel like if you if you didn't write your own raps or whatever, you should come out and say that because you shouldn't say, "Hey, I'm the best rapper out here," and you getting help with your raps or whatever. I'm not saying if you in the booth and somebody like, "Hey, you should, you should say this," or you should switch it up like that because everybody does that. But if you have like somebody jotting down bars for you, I feel like that's not the way to go. And I feel like you're. Uh, you're uh it's like an illusion you're like uh dis decepting or uh whatever the word i'm trying to say you're decepting if that's a word you're decepting the fans or whatever um and i thought that's not good to do so if drake could actually have people like pin down bars for him definitely just come out and say it. i mean i feel like nothing would happen because i feel like he's just such on the top of him right now nothing would happen but if he has people like hey you should put this right there that's okay, but if you actually have people jotting down your things, I feel like... But the thing is, no one knows. There's no, like, we Nobody don't... Nobody will know. Nobody Everyone's knows. assuming shit. Like, Nobody we're all just sitting here assuming shit that, like... I mean, some dude could possibly be sitting there writing 10 bands, 50 bands, 100 bands, being like, Drake, say these lyrics. Like, uh, I don't know. Like, possibly that could be the situation. Like, it could, it could be anything. But I think ghost writing, like, if someone's... If someone's sitting there and writing your lyrics... And you're supposedly like the the best rapper alive, or you're like you're you're in that top tier group. You feel me? That I mean, it's gonna you're gonna get backlash. You're gonna be it's people are gonna be like, what the fuck? Like we want you to write your own fucking lyrics. We want your experiences. We don't like. I mean, especially if you're not telling the like if you're like if you tell everybody that this is what's happening. You feel me? Like if this is what like if Dre. Or like Easy E, or like someone that's not, you know, someone that's known, like Kanye. Kanye gets help on lyrics and fucking, you know, production. That's known. Like everyone knows this shit. Like it's 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 okay because he's admitted it. But like for Drake, it's just like odd because he's always been this dude that he's so vulnerable and he's so like he connects with you because you're thinking that you know him. Like you know what I mean? Like that's how Drake's. That's why Drake's at the top because he connects with everybody. You just you can be in any situation and you hear a Drake record, and you're like, what the fuck? This guy's speaking to me. I'm, I'm relating to his experiences. So that's why I feel like with Drake, it's such an odd thing for him to. But like I don't know. I just I don't I don't feel like he's having he has real ghostwriters, man, because the songs that they've ghostwritten are so basic that anybody could write that shit. I feel like it's more that like, I read the 50th, the 50 Cent released a book with Robert Greene, and it was the, it was called um, The 50th Law, and Robert Greene's the dude that produced um, The 40 Laws of Power, and in the book, 50 Cent was talking about how old jazz musicians would fall off because they kept doing the same shit over and over. They kept doing the same shit over and over for like 20 years, you know, and eventually they would fall off because they didn't, they didn't expand, they didn't change up, and that's why 50 was talking about how you need to switch up. You feel me? Like, and then even has that line, like, um, if they hate, let them hate. Uh, so it's just no. Uh, what, what was the fucking what was the 50 line where Kanye quotes it? It was like, if they hate, let them hate. Let's just switch your style up, watch your money pile up, or some whatever shit like that. I hate talking about. Yeah. So like, so like, 50 had that just in that in that chat in that book. And ever since I read that book, I'm thinking, holy shit, this is exactly what Kanye does. This is exactly what Drake does. This, like, Kanye's constantly innovating himself. Like, on 808, he got Kid Cudi. On fucking, um, on um, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, he used, like, other people. He uh, he constantly has other contributions to his creation. So that way you're constantly being new. You're constantly, like, expanding your mind, putting new sounds to it, putting new perspectives on it. And that's what you need to do. That's hip-hop. That's, like, basic. I mean, hip-hop started off by taking a bunch of dope shit and then having this dope creation here. You feel me? That's what I feel like needs to happen. So Drake from... I mean, Drake, every project Drake's had, you can see that there's always been, like, a slight influence of somebody, like, Thank Me Later, Wheezy, like, um, Nothing Was the Same, Party Next Door, Take Care, The Weeknd, like, it's always been this kind of, like, inspiration for shit, and I don't feel like there's anything wrong with being inspired, you feel me, like, I don't think that, like, so I think that it's more so Drake is using, he's, he's getting people to maybe flow some tracks. Like, he, I feel like Drake writes the lyrics. I know that's going to be hated on. Like, I know motherfuckers are going to be like, oh, no, he doesn't. But, like, I feel like, I, I genuinely feel like 
He's writing the lyrics. Someone, he's giving it to Quinn or somebody to flow it, you know, to get that Atlanta flow going. And then he takes that and he's putting his twist on it. So then, then he's having new flows being made. And that's what's needed, especially for Drake. Because when we listen to Drake and you saw, you listen to, if you're in This Is Too Late, or every single time you hear Drake flow, you're just like, what the fuck? This guy's doing some new shit on this. How the fuck, how the fuck does he keep doing this? You feel me? There was a time where every song he dropped, there's some new flow on it. And you don't really see rappers constantly expanding their flows like that. You feel me? Like, it's a constant switch up. And it's crazy that now we know his, like, a couple of his secrets, I feel like. But I don't know. I, if it's ghost writing, uh, we couldn't put him in the top tier category. But ghost flowing, I have no issue with it. You feel me? I don't know. That's just how I feel. I feel like, um, I don't know. I just feel like if he honestly, like I said, has somebody writing his bars, and he's supposed to be like this most vulnerable rapper that supposed to connect to that rapper. When you're sad, you're supposed to be sad with him and all this crazy stuff. So if he has like somebody else in the booth sad with him, he's not really a sad one. But like I said, I feel like it's a little deceiving or whatever. But I don't know. I honestly feel like Drake is writing his bars, but it will be nice if he came out and said something. I feel like I feel like ever since this came out, he will always have a cloud over his head as he really can't be the best rapper because of all these like even though like we don't know what's going on, that's the thing. We don't know what's going on, so we can only assume. So it'll always be a cloud over his head that you really can't be top tier because we don't know what's going on. So I feel like I don't know. I feel like if somebody like I don't want to compare him to anybody, but I feel like if this happened to J. Cole, I feel like J. Cole would have addressed this by now. I feel like somebody like Kendrick would have addressed this by now. Cause I feel like they would have felt offended that nobody that somebody thinks they're writing their bars. So I don't know. I feel like it's a little weird that he doesn't feel offended to come out and directly address it. I know somebody's going to be like, ooh, he said something on this song, this song. But it's like little hints. I'm talking about like directly saying, they do not write my bars. Like, this person lied. Like, it hasn't been said. It's, he may say like a little slick, subliminal bar that you got to break down, but he hasn't came to the forefront and said, hey, this is not true at all. So I feel a little, feel a little weird that he hasn't came to the forefront and, you know, denounced this. So that, that's, that's that's a little weird to me. You see what I'm saying? I, I I feel that like I I wish he would go out and just go in like an interview and be like, well, this isn't true. This is happening. Blah blah blah. But for Drake though, I feel like he's never been the guy to really just sit there and just give you everything. Like this is what's happening. He's always like even in every beef he's been in, he's every beef he's been in. He's always he's never saying the rapper's name. He's coming at you with little shots here and there, like with common, stay scheming. Like uh, I hate it when the gods start acting like the bribe. Some they're like you know what I mean. Like he's he's never been the guy to really just you know give you everything but out there. I'm gonna <laughs> say I'm gonna say the difference. The difference between like like the common beef and like the other beefs that weren't Meek Bill beefs. They're like very small and miscule and petty and whatever. But I feel like this right here, like the whole the whole ghostwriter theme, that is like career that's, that's almost career suicide because people when you hear ghostwriter you think, Whoa, like he's not writing his own bars. I feel like that's something you can't be subliminal about. That's something you gotta if you wanna say in a song, you can still say in a song, you just gotta be very upfront and be like, Hey, it's not what's going on and not like throw in a subliminal bar that you might have to break down and like you have to come to the forefront. I feel like if you really take your craft serious and if somebody – I feel like, um, okay, let's say if LeBron James, somebody said, hey, LeBron James, you are I, – I, I'm going to expose you. The LeBron James that goes plays out on the a role games is a, is a fake. It's an imposter. It's his twin. <coughs> and let's say that was actually believable and everybody was like, really? I'm pretty sure LeBron James would be like – are you retarded? Like, you, you really believe in this? I feel like you would definitely denounce it because he takes his crap well, hold up, hold up, hold up. That's, like, the perfect example for to even set up my own point because you're saying that it'd be so ridiculous that he'd be like, fuck, like, I don't, I'm not going to fuck it. Like, I, I feel like he has denounced. He has said shit about it just in the Drake way. He hasn't yeah. he's gonna do it in, like, I mean, he's genius. That's who he is. That's how he's going to handle the situation. You feel but me? But that, that's something, like, if you take your crap serious, that's like saying that Picasso... Somebody was like, nah, Picasso. But how is that, how is that not taking your craft serious? Because, like, I'm saying, it's like saying weird. Picasso was it's like. No, nah, it's like saying Picasso was like, um, okay, it's like saying Picasso. So, the like, A Picasso didn't draw that. His brother drew it. And the way he responded was drawing a painting and be like, ha, I did this. 
and be like drawing in a subliminal way instead of coming out and saying, hey, that's not true, whatever. And the reason that, but the only reason that that could be comparable as if uh, to the Drake thing is if the, P- the Picasso thing actually had some type of validity to it. Like the things like referencing chats coming out, Quentin Miller kind of saying little things. Like this, this is not just random things. Like these things are like gaining validity. Then the whole dude, Moji or whatever his name is, he's like saying things. So it's like, I don't know. I feel like if you really take craft serious and somebody is discrediting your craft, you have to, you know, shut that down and be like, it's not what's going on. That's how I feel. But he, ha- but he has addressed it. He has like shut it down to an extent where, but we don't even. What does he say? Like, give me a line. Like, what, what was okay. it? Um, the one where he's just Meek Mills and he goes, uh, don't you want like the ghost? Fuck, I can't remember the, the off the top of my head, but he basically says that like. You want you should get yours. How I got mine. Like, uh, fuck. Is that charged up or is that no? That's I think it's summer sixteen. And then he also like forty came out and is talking about how Drake does his own bars. Um, I don't want to hear. I, I don't, don't hear, see. I don't want to hear forty. I want to hear him say. I don't want to hear. That's never been Drake though. Drake has never been that dude. Why? How is it? But, why he's, he's, never, but he's, he's never. But he's never been brought Drake. up. He's never been brought up on charges of discrediting his whole career. Maybe. Like, this, like, Common wasn't discrediting his whole career. They were arguing over Serena Williams. This is discrediting this man's entire discography, possibly saying that. Because I, I, honestly, I'm not lying. I remember around Think Later, Think Later came out. It was like a little thing of a screenshot. It could have been fake, but this was way back then. Uh, it was like, send me the verse I'll pay you this for. And it was a Drake screenshot. Could have been fake, but this was like 2010. So this has like always been like looming around his head. But now that it's big with the meat mill thing, I feel like when people are discrediting your craft, you have to come out and shoot that down. Not in like a subliminal way. You have to – and if it actually has validity to it. Like, like the LeBron James thing, like him like having an imposter, that's obviously like far-fetched. But if it actually had validity to it, you got to be like, okay, this is actually getting out of control because people are actually believing this. Like people actually believe that he's not writing anything or he's not writing a lot of stuff or he's writing some of it. And I feel like to let his fans know – you know, I'm writing this, or I'm not writing this, or I'm writing some of it. I feel like he should. I feel like he owes that to his fans. You know what I'm saying? But Drake has written for people before. He's a writer for people. He's written on like a, he oh, has. But the thing is, I feel like Drake. He's always let the music talk. He's never been the type of dude to be on interviews talking shit about people. He's let the music talk beyond everything. So when Views comes out, he might address it. When when he makes his music, he might address it. So we have to give the dude a chance to... Plus, he's also... I feel like the allegations... I, Drake has always been hated on. He's always been shared on by people. He's always been called a pussy. Like, everything. His whole career. So why would he start now being like, well, I'm not a pussy, but... Like, you know what I mean? Like, why would he start addressing shit now? I, well, I don't know. I don't even think it's hope. I think he's addressed he's addressed it in the Drake fashion to address it, you know? And also like it's not gonna end his career. It's not career ending. The dude is still winning, you know what I mean? Like it's just changed the discussion in hip hop to say if you're a top tier lyricist, is is someone ghostwriting your bars, is that okay? But at the same time though, I remember this one rapper in this black TV interview talking about how there is so much actual ghostwriting in hip hop that we don't know about. We don't our favorite rapper could have his fucking bar. Like no one you don't know. Drake's one of them that's got exposed, you know what I mean, to an extent. But I feel like there is a lot of bullshit going on behind the scenes that nobody really knows about, you know? And it for me, I honestly think it's not even a ghostwriting situation just because this is a dude that has gotten paid to write for other people. He's gotten paid to write for Dre. I mean, why would he need someone to write 10 bands, 50 bands. I mean, I'm keep quoting that song, but the songs that you listen to the reference tracks, you're like, this, these lyrics are so fucking, this is so simple. Why would you, why would you pay for someone 5k a month to write this? And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I'd expect maybe like 5 a.m. in Toronto or some shit to be written. If that's going to be the, if, give me a reference track to something like that. You feel me? The, the reference tracks that we're getting is like stupid shit where it's like, I feel like, I honestly feel like it's the flow. It's like, that Drake has always been the guy to expand on every single one of his flows too. You know, like when Versace came out, when yeah. he's on um, like every album, the flow switches. Like that's always been such a huge thing. I don't know. That's just that's just I, how I feel about the whole Drake situation. See, I don't I don't want to get people confused. Like I'm saying that Drake is like some like person that doesn't write his lyrics. Because I mean, I'm not. I don't know. I'm not there with him. I'm just saying the fact that it's a little fishy that you said like you gotta give dude a chance, let him say it in his music or whatever. I feel like. I hope he says some of you. I'm just saying, like, I don't know. I feel like if just somebody discredits you and say, you didn't write your verse for my album, I, or you didn't write this, or you didn't write that, I feel like 
As like that's like an author saying like, "Hey, you didn't write that book. I wrote it." <laughs> you know, he's like, "What? Yeah, I didn't yeah. write that." I, I feel like he should feel offended. Like I would feel offended. Like would you not feel offended if somebody was like, "You didn't write your review for the Ram Riddles thing. I wrote it for you." You'd be like, "What?" <laughs> and then people would be like, "Oh, he didn't. Oh, let's not listen to anything Ed Z has to say again." Or and then people would be like, "We'd be like, what are you talking about?" I feel like you're. You would make a video. You would say something like. This is a lie or whatever. You'll feel offended. I feel like Drake should feel offended as an artist and a man. Like, either you're lying on me or either you're exposing me. I feel like he should feel offended. I will be pissed. <laughs> I'll be throwing bottles and, like, everything around. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying I, about I, the I'm saying. I totally, I totally understand where you're coming from. And I feel the same way to an extent, too. I wish he would address it in a way that it's just, it's just simple that he's saying this is, like, addressing everything that's happened. But... I mean, I feel like a lot of there's a lot of bullshit out there too. There's a lot of bullshit accusations being thrown, a lot of bullshit allegations to the point where you're just like, I feel like he's just like, what the fuck is this? Like this is. But I don't need. Why hold, would I? Need to hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't mean to cut you off. Yeah. With you, but this allegation actually is this. This, this is the difference between the BS allegations and this allegations. There's two things. One, we've seen kind of a little validation to it, and two, people believe it because usually when you have a little Drake rumor. Maybe some people believe it, some people don't. Same, some people don't believe, it, some people do believe this. But there's gaining evidence where people are like, hmm. And I feel like the fact that he, people are like, hmm, he should <laughs> shut that down and be like, no, you know what I'm saying. So that's why I feel like this is an allegation. I don't think it's gonna be dangerous to his career, but it could be to others. And I feel like just as a man, I'll be defended. Like I mean, I'll be offended, and I'll be like, wow, like what a a hole. I definitely write all my lyrics. You know what I'm saying? I feel like he has addressed it. Like why? What does he? What does he need to do? Make a YouTube video to be like, <laughs> be like y'all be like, what the fuck you gotta do? No, this no, no. Person? Just be more direct because like he will say something like, like he'll say something like, um, like instead of saying like rhyming something like uh, I rate my lyrics and you know, that is, dude is lying, he says something like very coded to the point where it That's may be about who he is. That's who the fuck the dude is. It, it, it'll be something coded to a fact where you don't really know if he's talking about that or he's talking about something else, and I feel like. I, I feel like I feel like he's leaving it up to you, like he's deceiving us even more to be like, yeah, they still don't know if I write my lyrics. Like, like he'll be like, because he'd be like, yeah. Dude, that would be a funny ass skit though. Like yeah, it would. Doing coding and shit. Like you're like, what the fuck are you saying? What does this mean? He, he, he was like, he'll be like, uh, I clean the record with the black. Uh, oh, you hear me? Yeah, definitely somebody just called yeah. me my phone. <laughs> yeah, somebody just called my phone, but, uh, <laughs> no, nah, yeah, he'll do some shit like, uh, some shit like, uh, I clean the record with the lights off, uh, fuck it with the lights off, uh, I ain't gonna write this with the light. Like, he'll just say something like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and then I'll be like, you know, when he wrote it with the lights off, they mean that he cleaned it, you know, uh, Quint Miller last album was called Clean. Like, it was like, what? <laughs> and it's just be reaching, I don't know, it's just. I want it to be direct. That's what it is to me. I just want him to be upfront and direct. You know what I'm saying? That's what I think just getting to me. I feel like when you talk to ghostwriters like outside of Drake, if it's just – if someone is sitting there and writing your bars when you're like when you're rapping, you know, mm -hmm. I feel like that should, should disqualify – you from the conversation. If that is what's happening, like if that is really what's happening, you're you're paying somebody to write your lyrics, and it's not like a chorus. It's like actual verses and stuff. If that's what's what's happening, but if it's a situation where you're in the studio, homie over here is giving you like you're you're like you're chopping it up with him, like yo, bro, I'm about to sing song like this. You know what I mean, like, and he's like, no, no, you should you should add like another wavy in there. You know what I mean, or some shit like that. If that's what's happening, and then he has to credit that person because because you know like the legality of the situation is that you have to give credit if someone just gave you anything in the in that in those verses. Like, uh, I feel like if that's what's happening, then that I don't really have an issue with that because that's always happened. It's always going to happen in hip hop. But if it's someone actually writing your fucking bars, then uh, like I'm like, what the fuck is that? Like, especially someone to Drake's caliber where it's like. I, I listen, I, most people listen to Drake because we feel like it's his story, it's his struggle, it's what's happening in his life. I don't want to hear uh, Quentin Miller, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not, I, if I want to listen to Quentin Miller, I listen to Quentin Miller, you feel me? I'm not trying to listen to what's happening, what Quentin Miller thinks is happening in Drake's life, you feel me? Like, I, I, so like, <laughs> I, I, I understand the frustration with it, but for me, I 
really, really believe that it's not the lyrics. Because oh, just... why, why? But why would a guy that writes for other people and the songs that are coming out are like the ly- lyrically simplest songs have somebody to write those for him? Like, I don't know. I just I don't get that. I just I just want to tell people that uh, excuse me if I'm like doing weird things on camera and I'm not realizing it, or if I seem like very like. <laughs> I'm probably like very out of energy because I'm kind of tired. So yeah, I'm sorry because I keep forgetting that I'm on camera. So if I like dig my nose or like do something very weird, <laughs> please excuse me if I do that. But uh, yeah, that very is that really is really weird that uh he writes for the people and he has like allegations where saying he doesn't write. So I don't know. It just it, it's really it's really a, it's really a, um a conversation where he can only explain it. Like I can't explain it. You can't explain it. Only people that explain it is him and the people involved. So I feel like. At this point, it's becoming, uh, as Dame Dash like to say, chatty patty behavior. And mm-hmm. we have really, I mean, because we don't know anything. We're just speculating. So I don't know. I just, I just want the man about, to dress himself. What do you feel about ghostwriting outside of Drake? Like, where if a new rapper came up and he I was just, open? I feel like he was, being he was open, and I feel, <laughs> feel like it's a group. It's not a rapper. I feel like it's it's, <laughs> it's him and other dude. Like, I feel like... Like, I feel like you're out here ghostwriting your group. Like, it's, it's you it's and the other, the other person. Do you agree? I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I mean, but songs are different, though, because in the, essentially in a song, you're trying to capture, I mean, in any other genre, you're trying to capture a moment, you're trying to capture a vibe, and if someone else is maybe, I don't know, it's, it's, it, it does seem a little fake to an extent, but you're buying beats from people. You're buying like I don't know artwork from people. If you if you have the money and you really wanted to, you could buy lyrics from people and then. But and yeah, but like hip hop is such a genre where we're about authenticity. Because and... like it was just very different. Because like I told you, like anybody could sing. I mean, anybody could no, not excuse me, not everybody could sing. So the people who can't sing but could really write lyrics, they give those people, they give those music to people that can sing, and they that's can do it. Just... Writing. That's just writing. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm just saying. I, I'm pretty sure there's some singers. I'm not. I'm just talking about writing in general right now. I'm just, okay. just. Hey, follow me. I'm talking about writing in general. So I'm saying like when people like write a Beyonce song, like when she doesn't write a song, nobody gets mad, right? Because uh, I don't know because it's singing. That's always been going on. But rapping, it was always about like you know just like. It was about us, like the all, like you know, it's about your story. You know what I'm saying? Like it was always about like where you're coming from. And singing has really never been about like personal stories at the beginning. But rap has always been like where you come from. So I feel like if a other rapper is rapping another guy's story, like <laughs> that, that's that's the theme, the purpose of what rap is. You know what I'm saying? But like, Diddy, Diddy gets all this shit written, and Diddy's an, I fuck with Diddy rapping. What? Well, like, I mean, Diddy. But Diddy has like never claimed to be the best rapper, so I don't care. Like Diddy has never claimed to even be a rapper. He, I feel like Diddy just hopped on just to hop on and have fun. <laughs> like if you want to do that, come out and say I'm cool with that. Like Diddy, Dre, they never claim to be the best rappers. Like they, like they're openly like, yeah, I got writers or whatever. I mean, because they're not rappers, they're just having fun. I'm okay with that. But if you're trying to be like the next best rapper and saying you're the next best rapper, but you got other people writing for you, that's that's not that's not what it is. You're group at that point. You're not a rapper. You're a duo. I, I feel that. I feel that. Like, yeah, especially in hip hop. Like, you, if you're not open about it, it, it it's the scene as like, what the fuck? Like, we can't put you in that conversation no more because of it. But I mean, in, in terms of the Drake situation, I don't really feel like we know exactly what's going on. Yeah, we have no idea. Yeah, so we're just speculating on that. But yeah, I feel like they should just be open open about it. Like, if you do have writers, like, no one has an issue if you have a fucking writer, you know what I mean? Like, there's no issue. Like, Diddy has a writer, like, he goes, I write checks, not bars, or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, like, but like I nobody... But, but then again, people would care because people wouldn't look at you... People, I feel like, if you... Op- if people start openly having writers, they will be categorized in a different bracket of rappers, so... I feel like they wouldn't be... Hmm? Kanye is seen as a great rapper. And Kanye, uh, I feel like, I feel like people really caught on to Kanye having writers late in his career, and that didn't like come on like the beginning of his career, so that kind of saved him. But if you start off like, uh, I'm the best rapper of all time, and I have writers, you're going to be categorized in a different spot. But Kanye was already validified, and then people like 
picked on of him like having writers and stuff. Like it broke my heart. I really thought he wrote Jesus Walks by himself. And when I found out he didn't, kind of broke my heart because like I just I thought that like that's one of my favorite Kanye songs. And I was like, you didn't write that by yourself. Really? But but I mean, should a rapper really just? I mean, it's 2016. Do we all just need to sit there in our notebooks and you know what I mean, like pen all these fucking lyrics? Hey, 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 not music? saying, not saying I'm the rapper, rappers, but hey, I'm writing my own bars out here, and I feel like people. Sh- it's it's not that hard to write your own bars. Like it's not. I feel it's, like rappers just get lazy if they are using ghostwriters and shit. Like you yeah, yeah, get, you're getting you're lazy just, at that point. And if you get like, lazy, oh, I don't give a fuck. I can give this guy like a couple stacks. I get a fucking nice ass verse out of it. You're getting lazy, and that's the. That's taking. That's why some people say rap is dead or whatever. And if so, it's because rappers are getting lazy. Like, it's, if you're getting lazy, then how about you take a break, get into another, you know, uh, business or a hobby you like to do. You get that game from rap back. You go back at it. Like, don't, but don't cheat the fans out. You know, I don't know. I just feel like you're cheating the fans out if you have some ghostwriters and stuff. We have to. I mean, but I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know. If people are really buying bars like that. I, just I hope like, not. I don't think. So. I hope not. I hope not. I don't know. It's just like it's so stupid. To, why would you buy bars? Like you, it, I don't know. I don't get it. It's like, especially no. if like you're, if you're if this is your career choice as a rapper. Why would you buy bars? Like that doesn't make sense to me. I hope not. If because Kendrick is my favorite rapper right now. If I found out Kendrick was buying bars, I would, I would lose my mind. I would go crazy. I would really like hurt myself. I would not want him to buy bars. <laughs> Kendrick is killing it though. Fuck. Yeah. Man, if, if, if I found out like freaking Severe Butterfly was written by f- fucking Pitbull or Flo Rida or some shit, like I'd be pissed. Like, <laughs> just be really pissed if that happened. Like, I'd be very mad. Pitbull so, yeah. was just ghostwriting old Kendrick's lyrics and shit. Yeah, like, like Flo Rida. <laughs> that'd be horrible. That'd, that'd be... But I don't care. Like, even if even if a person that's not considered a lyrical rapper. If I found out Young Thug wasn't writing his bars, I'm a big Young Thug fan. If I found out Young Thug writing his bars, I will also be mad. Cause I'm like, what? Because I defend him so Dude, much, and then to find out he would, I don't know. I just, if any of my favorite rappers are buying bars, I'm just, you're losing respect to me. Cause I feel like just do it yourself. You came in this game to be a rapper, not a reciter. Yeah, I agree. With that. But I just, I feel like the Drake situation is more so flow and shit. Uh, the Drake situation is very much more uh, complicated than we will, will probably ever know. Unless, I feel like, you know, like 20 years from now, it's going to be like that one guy that knows everything. He's going to come out and tell the whole story. It's going to be like some guy that was like deep in the Drake camp or whatever. But from now, I feel like we'll never know on what exactly happened. Yeah, yeah that's 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 ghostwriting in hip-hop, yeah. yeah so, uh, I, anything else you want to say or... Um, want to add in? I feel like we could delve into other conversations, but like in terms of ghostwriting, I think like we've like etched out all the opinions. You feel me? Like we've we've pretty much hit all the little corners. One of the stories, if you if you if you're looking at this, you want to be a rapper. Don't don't buy bars. Just don't I'm, buy bars. Man. I'm saying that you could buy bars, just don't get You high. could buy <laughs> bars, and if you do buy bars, don't buy bars from Flow Rider people. Probably gonna have they got hits though. Hey, both of those dudes got mega hey, hits. I'm gonna come clean. Flo Rida got a song called "Welcome to My House" that's out right now. Hard song. You guys check out <laughs> "Welcome to My House." Phenomenal song. Now, hey, I was hating on Flo Rida to be funny. <laughs> Why you playing? Flo Rida got some bangers, man. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. Man. Hey, I take that back. If you're going to buy some bars, buy, buy some it bars from Flo Rida. Rida. <laughs> buy some, some Flo Rida bars, man. Hey, I take that back, man. Buy some Flo Rida bars. And I feel like uh. I feel like talking about Florida is a perfect way to end, <laughs> perfect way to end this whole conversation right here. So, uh, hey, before we end it, anything you want to say to the people out there? Like, anything you want to – last, any last words, final words? Uh, this has been Life and Times with YNS, you feel me? It's, uh, it's your boy right now, Eric. And it's your boy, Ezzy, and we're out of here. It's going to be crazy because, like, you're looking at this right now, but we're going to do a whole bunch of editing because, like, when we hang up – Nate got to take us off live and stuff. Hey, it doesn't fucking matter, man. It's your boy, and I'm out of here, and I say what I mean, not mean what I say. Haters go hating. Please go play highlights to your boy, man. <laughs> we'll be off here. I'm going to hang up, though. So I'm going to hang up. You hang up, right? Like the times, bitch.